Hey guys, Ermin here from Systematic Productions. Today we've got a very special episode for you featuring the brand new Fortin Nameless Amp Simulator. In my opinion, this thing is on the cutting edge of amp simulation technology. Nothing else quite reacts or feels or sounds the same as this thing does, and I'm hoping that after this tutorial video, you'll agree. Before we get started, I'd just like to thank my buddy Ola for providing the tracks that we're using for this. They're from the Feared Record Vinter. You can actually get these stems and raw DIs yourself on Ola's page, which I'll link down below. Before we get started, let's take a listen to what our raw DIs sound like. Heavy as fuck, right? With the plugin on, so the very first thing you want to do is take the oversampling slider straight to high, much like their B7KU plugin. Uh, this will immediately improve the tone, assuming that you've got the CPU power to handle it. Now, if we just listen to what it sounds like with everything flat, it's a little bit thin, a little bit abrasive. We're going to start targeting that in the cab sim section. So we've got an SM57 model set up here. The problem that we're running into is that positionally it's at zero, which means it's direct on with the dust cap. It's the harshest it's ever going to sound. So let's just tweak that to make it a little bit more balanced from the source. And perhaps unsurprisingly, the point where it starts to sound the best and most balanced is roughly where the cone meets the dust cap on the speaker. So for now, we'll just deal with the 157, but we'll come back to this section later. So going back to the amp simulator itself, you've got two different jacks, a low gain input and a high gain input. With the high gain input, both gains on the amp head are active, which is something that we want for now. So I'm just going to tweak the tone a little bit to make it a little bit more nice and a little bit more balanced. <laughs> So in the stomp box section, we've got the Fortin grind pedal modeled. This is going to help us a lot in tightening up the overall tone and boosting the amp to actually get us that extreme metal sound. And now we're talking. Let's go back to the cab simulator section and try and balance and fatten out our tone with a second microphone. We've got some really good options in there, but I like the Dynamic 906. What I'll tend to do with the second microphone is make sure that it's a fair bit underneath the first. It's just functioning as an auxiliary sound to fill in the gaps, if you will. And the other thing we'll want to do is adjust the position on this as well, just so it doesn't sound quite as harsh. <laughs> What we'll do now is load up the same tone across both of the main two DIs and hard pan them left and right respectively. Not half bad. And this is where we bring in our secret weapon. So one thing Ola was nice enough to do is quad track these guitars, which means that our potential tonal palette is opened up almost infinitely. One thing I like to do with quad tracking is use your auxiliary pair in order to create a sound that's a little bit more raw and rough than the main set of guitars. This sort of opens up your ability to create a larger sound and blend in just as much of it as you need. So in this case, I have no grind pedal engaged at all. And consequently, I've got the gains on the amp pretty high up in order to compensate for that. Treble and presence are also a fair bit higher just to fill in that sizzly stuff that I don't really want so much on the mains. As you can tell, it's not a very impressive tone in and of itself, but once we combine it with the mains, I think you'll understand. In the cab sim section, we've ditched the dynamic for a ribbon 121, just to kind of dull things out a little bit more, give us a slightly different timbre to the sound. 
So here's how it all sounds together. First we'll listen to just the main pair and then we'll switch the quad tracks in and out. As you can hear, the quad tracks enhance the sense of fullness immensely. Now we'll use some very light mix processing and play a large section of song just so you can hear how great these guitars sound. It's amazing how effortless it is to get such a great time with this plugin. I hope you enjoyed the short tutorial. Big thank you to Neural DSP for providing the plugin. If you like the sound of the plugin, make sure to pre order it on their channel. You can find the link in the description of this video. Likewise, if you enjoyed the songs that we were working with and want the raw tracks, you can get those from feedband.com. I've got the relevant links in the description for that as well. In respect to the light and mix processing that we did on the guitars, that's something I'll be going over in much more detail on a premium video mix course I'm developing. The best way to stay up to date with that is to just subscribe to this channel and follow Systematic Productions on Facebook or go to systematicproductions.com. I'll keep you guys in the loop. So until next time, thank you very much.